Hey everybody, it's time for another R&R episode with me, Chris, and Ruel. Ruel, say hello to the nice people. Hello, friends. Welcome. I'm Ruel Gaviel, joined by Chris George. And unfortunately, we're not joined by our third co-host, Ray, who is taking some time off to get ready for Gen Con and all the mm-hmm. other cons uh, this season. Chris, how the heck are you, man? I'm doing fantastic. I am very excited to complete this trilogy. Yes. We've had we've had some exciting trilogies in the past. Back to the Future, Spider-Man, the Tobey Maguire version. Okay. Uh, okay. But no trilogies have ever had the Lord of the Rings, but no trilogies have ever had such esteem as this or The Hobbit. Uh, so we'll hope to get on the same <laughs> level of The Hobbit's yes. esteem, the esteemed trilogy of The Hobbit uh, and our trilogy of deck builders deck builders with a board and bag builders yeah which I, and, I i i'm excited i am too uh, this uh, this is the natural progression of what we've done the last couple of weeks um and i am really excited about this list because there are not as many bag builders as i thought they were chris like mm-hmm. i just assumed oh you know after the last time we did our bag our deck building with a board you know we said okay next time we'll do bag builders I was like, okay cool and i went to research and i'm like oh there's games that i thought were bag builders i didn't actually Go, I didn't have anything where I would have to go into a bag and pick something out. No, it was like, oh, what I was thinking of, this was like a dice building game, or I was thinking totally different yeah. games. And then when I finally narrowed it down, like, oh, there's not as many as I thought. And that's what I'm excited about, because I know that you and Richard have picked some very different games than me. Um, well, at least I hope I hope so. We'll, we're going to find well, out. Well, I know that you picked one of mine, because mm-hmm. I ha- I got it bumped off of my list. Okay. Um, so I, I, but I'm, I am excited. I think there's something really fun about the tactile nature of bag building. I think that's why I like it so much Yeah. is because like there, there's, it's very sensory, you know, and I think we play board games to have that, that tactile experience. And yeah. I think making it a bag builder when it is, when it works, like a deck builder, I think has potentially a, a lot more variety because every card can be its unique thing. Mm-hmm. And in, in a bag builder, every chip can be a unique chip, but then you also have to have probably a reference card for that chip. <laughs> uh, so right. like, why not make it a deck builder then? So, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think, I think there's, it's the tactile nature of these things that, uh, that make me excited to talk about them and excited to play them and excited to dive back into them when sometimes a, a deck of cards may not have that similar pull, right? Yeah. It creates that presence, yeah. which I think is kind of fun. That's, that's a, such a great point, just that tactile sensation. I mean, I do love that, you know, with the, some of these games that we're going to talk about today, just reaching in that bag and pulling something out. It's a much different sensation than shuffling a deck of cards, drawing mm-hmm. five and, and doing that. So yeah. great point. Um, we're going to kick it off right now, folks. Actually, a little different this time. We're going to let Richard take things away, and then we'll go from there. All right, Richard, what do you got? All right, this is fun. I'm kicking it off for once. Let's get going with our combined number 10 on the list, Meeples and Monsters, which is a very, very cool bag builder. And, you know, uh, over the last few years, there's been a huge explosion in interest in the idea of deck building games combined with worker placement games. And how can you do that? Because this is a bag, they're just all glommed into one here because you've got a bag full of meeples in this game. Very cool looking meeples as well. They're all silk screened with lots of cool little adventurer designs on them. And um, what you do is you reach in the bag, you pull out, and you find out what workers am I going to have for this particular round. And of course, over the game, you are going to get different types of uh, characters, different types of uh, villagers that are going to help you protect the city and all of that. And um, also, the uh, bag over time starts getting filled with blank meeples, and those represent corruption that just clog you up like a traditional deck builder, but here in bag building form. I just think it's really, really cool, this idea of the uh, bag building informing the... uh, worker placement of the game because hey i need to do this right now but the bag didn't give me what i wanted but i'm responsible for that bag uh it's uh got its stuff because i put it in there and i think it is a really really great example of the form and it is our number 10 meeples and monsters wow i'm glad that richard put this on this list i totally forgot about this game and i really enjoyed this when it came out a couple of years ago um i actually did a kickstarter video for it um i don't know why it didn't take off because this has got two of my favorite things bag building and worker placement um and 
for whatever reason, it just didn't take off. I, I don't know why. Um, I will be honest. I, I played it for the Kickstarter video. I played it a couple, maybe like once or twice afterwards and just sort of forgot about it. And then when the, it came out, I think in retail, I just, I don't know why it didn't stick around. I Maybe it was just maybe convoluted a little bit with the, the uh, choice of mechanisms. I don't know. I would like to revisit this game though, Chris. I mean, Meeples and Monsters, it's super, I mean, it was really good when I played it. Yeah, I remember. I remember thinking it looked really cool. Like I, I remember when it was on Kickstarter, when it was on crowdfunding, mm -hmm. and I, again, this was one that I think I, I, I wanted to play. I haven't played this one, but uh, it, it, so in terms of when you pull stuff out of the bag and like inter where it goes, and now your recollection may be foggy since it was a few years ago, Ruel. Yeah. So if it is, that's that's completely fine. Uh, but in, in terms of the spots on the board, like what are some of the exciting spaces that you can? you can go to in terms of that worker placement aspect what was there anything about the worker placement that jumped out you know, uh, to it, you it's funny now that you say that maybe perhaps now i'm thinking maybe that's why it didn't take off as much because mm -hmm. at the time i remember I, I thought it was really unique the bag building element but then the worker placement stuff it seemed pretty straightforward you know go here mm -hmm. get some resources go here convert resources to other things go here i, I don't know if right. there's a combat element i don't think there was a combat element it was basically yeah. sending all the meeples out there to do stuff so maybe that was part of the thing why it didn't really stick around or be as highly regarded as i thought it would be but i mean it was yeah it was a good game maybe maybe not look well, obviously maybe not the number one bag builder of all time um so yeah but yeah. i mean i think it still looks cool and i think yeah. the the draw again is that sort of like tactile feel with yeah. the different screen printed meeples were friggin really neat yeah. it's one that i like that like i actively want to want to try i i think you you need those worker like you need the standard worker placement spots too i i always yeah. find like i i try to focus on what's unique about a game i think we all do because yep. we all have a lot of like a large collection but you you still need those you still need the basics you still need the building blocks yeah. that form up to that like unique twist i think the unique twist here is just that it's the art and the the actual meeples and yeah. the differences there yeah maybe. yeah great point great point okay uh that's number 10 thank you richard uh let's turn things over to uh us now chris you are going to do number 9 all right, number nine. I am going to talk longer than than Richard. I also wanted Richard to go on more so that I could tease him for going on too long <laughs> and feel better for when I talk too much. But alas, here we are. Uh, my number nine almost didn't make it on the list, but it did. Uh, in it, and I am actively excited to play this game again. I will not until I get the better upgraded tokens that oh. Come On decided to put into Wave Two inexplicably. Uh, in their Kickstarter campaign okay. uh, and then proceeded to, you know, not deliver that for still now. But when it comes, <laughs> I am actively excited to play this game again. And, and this is a uh, Vong Legends. I think the video you have is probably my unboxing. Uh, oh, that's the link see. that that's. Uh, oh, oh, no, there it? you go. That's perfect. Oh, no, okay. no, that's a that's a better link than what than oh. the one that I had, I had sent him. So okay, that's cool. perfect. Um, cause this shows, this shows a lot, a lot more stuff about the board. A few things really drew me in about this game. And there's a few things that I quite like. I really like the combat system. I like that it is just a lighthearted romp through an adventure land. There's a light campaign that's happening, uh, in terms of the progression of the story and how you go through, but it's not really a standard campaign game. It, you'll, it'll be like a branching paths of scenarios you can choose, and the campaign of the legacy element deals with the locations that you slot into the board. So there's all these different locations which will stay from sort of round to round, depending upon what has happened. But you sort of reset your own bag in between the campaigns. And I think a, a few people were disappointed about that because you're, you're, you're building up your bag, you're building up your bag. You want to keep that build as you progress through this campaign, but you sort of reset it and then you grow it over the over each time. Uh, you do also get to level up your character. Uh, everybody's going to choose a class. It's sort of a standard dungeon crawling-esque theme in which you'll have, you know, mage classes or barbarians. You know, they're called spell weavers or whatever. But uh, and you go on through like a little narrative, choose your own adventure. You go to a spot, you'll interact with that spot, you'll see what happens, you'll make a choice, and all the while you'll have to use your bag to fight monsters or deal with uh, stat check resolutions, essentially. So it's like, hey, that person's running out of the castle, do you want to attempt to stop them or, or using your might? Uh, sure, well, draw from your bag and see if you draw like enough uh, strength tokens or whatever. That was in the first 
in the first uh, mission. So I played this with my buddy, Zach. Uh, I, I actually won a contest of this before I was a content creator. Oh. Was before that, there was a contest on Kaman's uh, Facebook page. And it was create a name for your friend and uh -huh. create a story, like a backstory about who they are. And so like I took a deep dive into the lore of Prudvong where like I looked up what every race was in there. I looked up every background. Uh, I think I made like five or, or six different, like I wanted to hit one of, there's like nine different races. So I wanted to hit like one of each race and, and like apply, apply my friends into, <laughs> into there uh, and create like new names. But, but so I won. And so my buddy, Zach, who's actually been frequently on the Ruin Board channel, uh, I, I made a dwarf character um, called Zvokarnir. His last name is Groom, Groombridge. So I made it Zvokarnir. Uh, bridge master of the great chasm because in true Vongan lore when the dwarves like all the female dwarves are down in like subterranean levels and then when you're born you make like the journey up from the inner of the mountain and then you cross this bridge and then you you meet your clan like you get named and you go into your clan and so and that's how you get like your last name and so i made for zvakarni i thought what, what would be cool is if there was one like guardian troll who like just protects that that way into the deep Right. And so he's the person who stands at the ready in front of like making sure nobody can pass, making sure that like the all all the, the female dwarves and the babies are protected. Mm -hmm. uh, and and like, like so he just took up residence on the bridge and didn't like finish his journey. And and then in, and then in the lore that I created, he's only like left his post three times and like no one's ever been able to like get past him. Wow. He's just such like a hulking warrior. Yeah. Anyway. Apparently, the part of part of so I won a copy of the game, yeah. and and then I and then I, uh, I pledged for the there was a an additional dwarven like expansion. I think he was Valkarnir should have been in the base game, but he might be in the expansion. Whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know. Apparently, there's a, there's an NPC somewhere Valkarnir, which is yeah. uh, what I created, and it got into the game, and like I won a pledge, and then I also upgraded with upgraded tokens. And the one, the one thing I will say about this is that the tokens that that are in the base game are are not good. They're oh. flimsy cardboard, and they're not satisfying to pull. And I was like, I have these upgraded tokens because I knew from playing other games like Quacks or or whatever mm -hmm. that the upgraded tokens are always so satisfying with this tactile experience. I was like, okay, I'm going to splurge. I'm going to spend the fifteen bucks or whatever and get that those extra tokens as well. Uh, and I just think it was just such a ridiculous idea that come on wouldn't at least push those out yeah. uh, in the first wave because there's a there's a wave of the of the base game and then there's a wave to like develop the stretch goals and whatever. Anyway, this game gets panned. I've, I've talked too much. I've talked too much. No, Who am I, no, Richard? I, I'm um, fascinated by this because I've not played this game, so this, this is all yeah. giving great information. I also think it's perfect that you won a contest given that you're a storyteller to begin with and so you told this great story right of this character so i want to go seek out this character now chris like i, I was really i awesome. was like i i took a deep dive into yeah. the lore it sounds um, like it. <laughs> i'll you know what i should do i'll find the other stories the, the other passages the other names of okay. people that i that i made because i was yeah. also really proud of all of them and i'll and i'll comment on this video with them I'll, like when this is oh yeah when this is aired on youtube yes uh, i'll go and i'll post all them all them in the comments so if you don't see it there it'll be coming because i'm really really proud of all the other ones so i'll go back i'll go back in time to find that come on facebook post that's great and i'll get, and I'll get the, the sections um and because uh, they're all different yeah i really like my the one that i did for my friend brandon too that's fantastic. Uh, but i'm not going to talk about it now um uh, yeah this, this game this game got a lot of of kind of uh slack or 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 a bit of hate because it was a really slow process it funded in 2019 it is 2024 right now and it still hasn't fully delivered oh my um, goodness whoa right okay because okay. they're they're just getting the second wave which is all of the other expansions and the stretch goals coming out to people now okay. uh they're like it, it and it was one that they were like listen we don't like where this game is at we're gonna take another whole year and redo it and okay. redevelop it and redesign it uh and and i i like that they did that because yeah. i i think that's important for a company to recognize this isn't what we want to do we're not going to put produce something that's not good but i also think that kind of set expectations a little bit higher 
Uh, I think the bag not developing in between campaigns is a bit of a miss and is a bit uh, disappointing. But I personally uh, quite enjoy and and I'm excited to dive back into it because it, if you approach it being like a light narrative text choose your own adventure style game where you can draw out the the tokens to to see what what spells you can activate essentially you're, you're pushing your luck too a little you can keep drawing to activate more spells but if you run out of spaces if you can't place them then you're like your turn fails mm. so i think that's a that's a fun little element but i yeah. also think you can see in the design them feeling hamstrung to Things like the bag building, I think the bag building was a little bit more prevalent in a previous iteration, and, and I think they might have scrapped it entirely if they hadn't sold the like fifteen dollar upgraded tokens already. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're like, well, this has to be in the game because we've already <laughs> sold elements to it in their like sort of redesigned scrappage. Yeah. So I think I think it's a really interesting game that that I have followed since its since its development, right? right? Like way back when, like I got really into the world. I got really into the journey and the process and I've seen the changes that they've made along the way and I've, and I've played it. So I like, I I'm happy that it's on this list as an inclusion. Cause I think a lot of people dislike it. Uh, but I think if you go in knowing it's kind of like a lighthearted, the decision space isn't that heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're just moving some figures around the map. It might be a little bit too expensive for what it is because mm -hmm. it's come on. And so it has all the figures and, and whatever, but I still think it's kind of fun and yeah. worth trying out if like your friend has it or, or you, you see it somewhere. So that's yeah. our number nine. <laughs> and I can never talk about length ever again. <laughs> and I will not talk this, this long about anyone else's choices, <laughs> but I got excited about my stories <laughs> and I'm still very excited, but I'm going to shut up now. and We're going to move on to number eight. <laughs> No, I love it. And uh, just uh, just one final thing, just to put a cap on this. So the hate that people were directing towards this game, was it the game itself or just the process of, hey, it's taken almost, it's over five uh, years now. Like, I think where's both. That my game, I, think, you know? I think I've watched a few other reviews of it too. And, and people have come to the conclusion that like, it's fine. And I think it is fine. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think it's fine. Like if I had to rate it right now, it would be like, it would be like a 3.5 out of 5. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. like it's 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 good. It is a good game yeah. for some people and other pe I think people were expecting something differently and I also don't think it managed to capture the sort of like narrative breadth and scope that it was maybe seeking for in 2019 in the boom of campaign games. Yeah. But also I think that might be why I like it more and I'm more likely to return to it now knowing that it's really just a scenario based game where mm -hmm. you have branching scenarios instead of an actual campaign game where like you're not going to develop your character that much right uh, but i'm okay with that because it makes it more manageable and and puts less pressure for me to get it to the table okay uh, so that's, that's what fair. that's what i would say yeah and that's that's what's got me intrigued not well first of all i'm intrigued because i see how passionate you are about it i mean you did your deep dive in the lore i think that's awesome you don't hear about that about any other game or uh, you don't hear that yeah. very often but also just taking that bag building element and adding it to a narrative uh, game, I think that's very unique and very clever. You know, we're talking about, hey, what does make this game unique? That That's definitely unique in this case, right? So yeah. I'm looking forward to try it someday, Chris. Or maybe one day I could just listen to you talk about it for like another hour or so. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but great choice. Thank you for that. Uh, let's move yeah. on to our number eight, which is going to be my call. Uh, this is not a narrative game, but it does have bag building. It's a game, um, actually, our number 10 game was from AEG Meeples and Monsters. Our number eight is as well. This is a game called, excuse me, <coughs> War Chest. Um, this is mm. an abstract game at its heart. And uh, what you're doing is um, you have a bag of these little tokens, and they're like Splendor style tokens. Uh, that's our friend Becca Scott uh, over there back in the day on Ge our, um, Geek and Sundry. You have a bag, and these Splendor like tokens are your warriors that you send out into battle. And as you do that, uh, you draw three per round, I think. Yeah, I think it's three per round. And what you're doing is just place them on the board. Um, let me see. Okay, there's the board there. Each one is a different um, type of fighter. So you have your knights, you have your um, swordsmen, you have your uh, archers, and so forth. And depending on what you lay down and where you lay it down, it's going to do a different ability. So it's going to trigger an ability, and it also adds a little area control uh, to the game. Because ultimately what you want to do is capture... I think it's six different uh, locations on board, at least in the four-player game. Um, and then if you do that, it's ultimate. Uh, you just win. You just win right there. So it's very abstract, but 
I like to think of it, there's a little story telling element to it where, you know, you could talk about your archers going here, your cavalry, um, the fighter or the swordsman, not swordsman, uh, lancers. You know, the lancers have to go in a straight uh, line, right, as lancers do. Uh, archers, they have range, right, so you can, um, you know, uh, attack figures that aren't uh, adjacent to you and, and so forth. So I love this game. I think it's, I, I don't know what it is. I, I feel like... I haven't played as much as I want to, uh, or I've wanted to, because I don't know. It, it, I it played it played decently at two. I shouldn't say it didn't play decently at two. It did play it too, but I definitely liked the four player and the three player experience for this game. It was just really it was just a lot of fun going back and forth, and the turns go by so quickly because you're just drawing three tokens out of your bag and playing one, and then play another, and so forth, and. One of the tokens, or one of the things you can do is are buy different tokens. And uh, each token, there are different factions of uh, different units. So I, I should mention, I should have mentioned this at the start. So everyone's going to start with four different ones in their bag, um, right? So you're going to take four different units. And there are 16 units in the game. So they're not all going to be the same. They're all going to fight differently. Um, actually, Chris, now that I think about it, the more I'm talking about this game, it gives me a little bit of a feel of a Kinesia game where the mm. tiles, you know, you're just, they're tile lane, sort of like Samurai, yeah. I guess, where you're trying to get uh, gain control of one little area. But in this case, rather than having numbers, you're actually trying to, you know, uh, pew pew, uh, uh, fight your right. uh, opponents and take them out, take those um, uh, tiles or those tokens out of there. So War Chess, it's for an abstract game, I never thought I'd say this about an abstract game, but it, it plays really well at four. You know, in my mm. mind, abstract games are usually like like two player. Yeah, you know, two player. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'd heard that War Chess was on, was good at two, but I hadn't heard it good at four. But you yeah, like it at four. I think that's cool. what really surprised me. I, I you know, uh, as I'm talking it out here, two players. I it was good at two players, but I, I just I really had a fun time with my four player experience, which I didn't expect, and I think that's why it resonates with me. Having said that, I have not played this game in a while, and I have both uh, two of the expansions sitting here unwrapped, nice. and I need to play them because they they add more uh, characters. And I mean, see, I mean, th this just looks so much fun, right? You have your bags, you have your little tokens. Uh, they have that splendor style weight. It's very satisfying. Again, going into the bag, pulling out that very tactile experience, and um, you just you battle on, and hopefully, you'll be the one remaining at the end. And that's why it's our number eight war chest. Nice, yeah, great. Great pick. I've heard good things. I want to try it. Exc excited that you put it on the list. Yeah. Um, I, it's, again, as I'm talking this out, I do remember a two player game I had with um, was it Michelle or no? It could have been with my buddy Daryl, and we were. It, it was a pretty good. Uh, it was a pretty good time. Uh, I shouldn't say the four players the best because I'm thinking about that now. I'm thinking about the specific two game I had with my buddy Daryl. But you know the way we play games, we're at our throats, each other's throats, anyways. So it could have been. Yeah. Maybe maybe we're just hanging out one day and talking trash. I don't know. It was either that or war chest. <laughs> Who knows, folks? Uh, anyways, that's our number eight. Let's go to Richard with our number seven. Uh, take it away, Richard. Okay, some interesting choices. Chris, Trudvang. Um, yeah, that's a great use for bag building. Basically, combat resolution. You're replacing uh, dice to see what happens with a bag full of chits and building them up. I really like that a lot. Although, not necessarily here. I think there is a much better example of this in the uh, in industry that you could have called out instead. And in fact, folks, don't forget, after this is over in the post show, we're going to be talking about other ones. At least I'm going to. I've got a full top 10 bag builders and you're only going to hear about my top four today. I've got six more and so you'll want to stick around or you can just jump right down to the extended edition of the show. There's links for it down in the show notes. But anyway, oh, what else? Oh, well, War Chest. Yeah, totally not my cup of tea, but I have always heard that this thing is absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, bag building, uh, you know, you know, in integrate it into chess effectively kind of sort of seems very very neat but totally not my uh cup of tea or bag of tea uh but anyway uh let's move on then to our combined what is it number seven on the list yes that's right it is automobiles which i think is actually very appropriate to have on the list because uh last r, r we did uh deck builders with boards and chris of course put trains on the list and this is kind of a sister product because at one point aeg did this kind of fun little gimmick three games uh trains planes and automobiles and it just so happens trains was a deck builder and automobiles was a bag builder and this is a game that replicates using a bag full of cubes that you build up over the 
course of the game and put different colored cubes in that represent different elements of your um, you know, high-performance racing car. Uh, and every round, you're going to pull stuff out and decide how to spend those cubes to keep zipping forward, you know, trying to get on the inside lane or draft behind your opponent's cars or all that. And as you can see right there, the um, the cubes you draw lets you plot out the path you're going to drive on the racetrack. And it's really cool. And what's even cooler is every time you play, there's always the same set of colored cubes. Um, you start with uh, you know some baby cubes in your bag, but you're going to put more of them over time. Time, and then you're hoping to draw them. But there's also a set of cards that every time you play, the red cubes and the blue cubes and all that are going to represent different functions of the car. So there's so much replayability. It's a really, really clever system. Um, and I liked it quite a bit. Now, this game idea ultimately got revisited a few years later um, in a spinoff called Cubitos, which I love, and it turned the cubes into actual dice, although it dropped the bag and had a different way of manipulating the dice instead of the cubes. So, uh, still, one of the greatest bag builders of all time, if you've never tried it, folks. And if you like automobile racing games, you owe it to yourself. Um, this is probably the my favorite one I have ever played in my my entire board gaming career. Uh, it's really, really good from designer David Short. Just a really rocks all design and uh, showing just how fun and special bag building can be. Number seven on the list is automobiles. Okay, so automobiles. I have a really interesting history with this game. I tried this Do many tell. years ago. Yeah, when it came out, Chris. And um, this was actually before I tried trains. I love trains. You and I are both are huge fans of trains. And of funny course. that this is yet another AEG uh, game. They must they must have seen bag yeah. building as something to do back in the day. Um, but automobiles, I got it to the table, or a friend had it, and I was playing it, and I realized, oh my gosh, my color blindness is brutal for this game. I oh. I was getting cubes, and I I was throwing out those. Oh, the brown cubes looks like this one, and I was just so off my game. I couldn't. I literally had to stop. It was one of the few times I had to stop and say, I can't play this game. I just, you know, unless y'all want to show me what colors. Uh, every I mean, it just I didn't want to slow down the game anymore. You know, yeah, it was such a bummer because I remember it being clever, and I like racing games. And I was like, okay, this will pretty probably be my jam, but. No, nah, it's it was not. Now, having said that, I looking back, I could have probably gotten a copy of the game and fixed it for my colorblind issues. What in that case, what I would do is take like a white pen and uh, like a white marker, and I could mark right. certain cubes. Like, hey, the brown ones have one dot or one pip. All right. the the red ones have two pips and stuff like. That. I've done it for other games before, but oh, I was so bummed about that because I really want to like this game. Um, but yeah, you just have to modify it yourself. Essentially, yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah, it was such a bummer, and it's funny because automobiles then came up a little later, just recently, a couple of years ago. I felt like it was re-implemented. Um, I don't know purposely or not by by Kubitos. Uh, that's mm. a John D. Clare game. Got a very similar thing. Uh, it doesn't have a bag though. It, you know, you use a dice and. I'm going to let you all know, spoiler alert, is Cubitos was going to be top of my list here, but then I realized there's no bag. They're like, you're, you're... Oh, uh, well, I would have allowed it. Really? Okay, if Richard, you allowed Richard, it... Richard, Richard, probably not. <laughs> right? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, it's Richard his channel, so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that was my, because I love Cubitos like a ton, but it really, yeah. I don't think it's a true bag builder. Um, It has some elements to it, but because it's not randomly tro chosen out of your bag. Like I, yeah, that's why I couldn't do it. But anyways, yeah, that's, yeah. that's my long story about automobiles and Kubitos and whatnot. For, so for, for your, for colorblind, because I know in automobiles, they have the white and then the lighter gray and the darker gray and the black, like that would, that was okay. It was more the brown and the red and the, like the other yellow, like the colored cubes themselves. The, no, the, the light gray and or the black what? were, uh, they're all, they're all pretty tough. They're I just, tough? yeah, I just re yeah. really remember the brown and red for whatever reason, right. like okay. super close to, for me so that was oh was such a bummer i really want to like that game yeah i mean i i feel like i've heard cubitos i haven't played cubitos i've uh automobiles is on board game arena i don't know oh. if the, that would be uh more accessible or not if there would be a, a yeah. way of hovering over it each could cube be. and it might say then you might yeah. be able to try it out and see if you want to like I, feel? I may have to do that because some of the uh, games on BGA are colorblind accessible and either they'll like, uh, you know, you could click on a button and they'll physically or it'll show on digitally like a little icon on certain cards. Or like you said, you just hover over and it'll say green or blue or whatever. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to check that out because I want to give that an, I just 
seeing Richard talk about, it, I'm like, okay, I need to give this game another shot. So yeah, automobiles. Okay. Um, moving right along. Uh, that let's was number seven. Let's go to number six. So back to you, Chris. Uh, okay. Yeah. Number six is, I think, oh yeah, no, I, I know what it is. It's Orléans. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice. Or Orleans, if you're nasty. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I called it Orleans for the friggin' ages, I and did then too. and then I started started calling it Orleans because everybody else did, yeah. and I and I I felt shamed about it. <laughs> um, uh, Orleans is uh, this game. This game is one of those games where well, I'll describe what it is for those of you who don't know. You're you're developing a, a trade network essentially across Orleans. Let's say probably that. A map. It doesn't matter where, uh, and and every there are like five or six different different workers or different types of people, and you pull them on your bag and you arrange them on your own player board. And once that space is full, each space requires a certain number of workers to sort of fill up. You then can get another worker and do a thing. And so you're always getting workers and you're always doing things such as moving your yourself around the map or uh, increasing the number of of people you can draw from or increasing the number of coins that you get for for getting these new people everything always gives you a bonus but the main uh fun part about this game is is really creating a a huge amount of diversity in your bag and uh and how you arrange them and the choices you make on okay do i want to develop more of my engine or do i want to expand and start trying to get points in this way there's a number of different ways to get points uh, it's a big old point mash salad. And it's one of those games where uh, I played the first time I played it. I thought, you know what? I've I've cracked the case. I've solved it. Uh, I have the optimal combination of actions and I don't ever need to play this ever again. And then I played it with my parents a bunch over pandemic. They really got into it. They actually bought themselves a copy and they would set up uh, a, a little their iPad over the board so that I could see like the board and the routes. And then I would just tell them, I would have my copy out and I'd match it. And I'd tell them like where I moved and like which which tokens I took. And so I'd be developing my own bag at home and they would be developing their two bags in person. They just remove stuff from the board once I took my moves and moved me around. And it actually worked really well for remote play when we had two copies of the game because they were able to automate like on their side. But I still got the, the, tactical, the tactile experience of drawing things out. Uh, and so with them, um, they're not like super heavy gamers as well, but they really liked it and took to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try a different strategy every single time. I'm not going to buy a building that I ever bought before. Uh, I'm going to buy something else. And every single time my score went up. So my my idea of like, <laughs> I've, I've solved it. I've perfected this game, which I think <laughs> it does give you that feel. I think we focus so much on like modularity in board gaming. And because you have a fixed map with like fixed actions and like fixed cost, there is that potential of like, okay, what do I do? What buildings do I get this time, right? There must be one that's better than others. And so it was, it was actually a really exciting discovery for me to play this game, you know, five or six times. Uh, with my folks and do a new strategy every time and buy new buildings every time and see that score continue to like increase and go up uh, and and realize oh okay m maybe there isn't one set strategy um, maybe maybe this board game is designed with replayability in mind <laughs> uh, so that was really fun I think it's a really solid game it's it's kind of a no brainer honestly for for me I knew it would be on this list I'm just happy that I get to talk about it. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of the go, one of the go-to bag builders in my opinion. Uh, and it, it does have such, uh, such a lovely flow to it that, uh, I'm glad I got to talk about it and put it as my number. Yeah. I, I assume there's a couple of games that were going to be on this list. I assume they were going to be on, and th this was one of them. Uh, just to, to change the subject a little bit. Have you played the, I think it's a roller right called Joan of Arc. Is that what? was this uh Joan of Arc was based on was early on I've you know what I I haven't and uh so I cannot add anything else to this conversation but I'm going to say yes it is exactly <laughs> that Ruel you got it right you know I'm I'm gonna look it up right now because it's bugging me because I think there was a roller yeah 
Joan of Arc, Orleon, draw and write. So I'm curious mm. about that because that plays. Oh yeah, 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 right? yeah. It was a draw and write thing. I I am remembering something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, like any roll and write. It's it's gonna there's gonna be a similar twist. Yeah, but with the yeah the same feel of mechanics, right? I think. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, well, okay, that has nothing to do with bag building, but I just wanted to. I it was in my head. I was like, there was a draw and write or roll and write. So. Um, I'm glad to know that I thought the right game. Um, anyways, uh, Orleon, great choice, Chris. I'm glad it's on this list. I mean, I mean, we all yeah. knew it was going to be. Um, yeah, and yeah, I wonder. It's a I, great, it's a great game. It's yeah, fun. I was wondering if if Richard had if he had his personal choice if it would be like higher on his list. I feel like this is his type of game, Orleon. But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he'll comment it uh, coming up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to number five. Thank you, Chris. Uh, is number five mine? Number five is mine. Um, this came out a couple of years ago, I want to say three years ago, and it was one of my favorite games of the year uh, from one of my favorite designers, Scott Alms. It is a solo game called Warp's Edge, and mm. y'all know me, I love my solo games, and this one is fantastic. It is a, a bag builder through, uh, through and through. You are um, going through this warp, this little ta- uh, space warp, where you're trying to kill, uh, take care of the mothership, right? And as you can see there, your ship has uh, different parts. You have a different hull and whatnot. And this is the end of the video. Let me go back. Um, so um, in this game, you're building your ship and you're hoping to have enough shields, have enough um, lasers or pew pew weapons, right? In order to take down the mothership. And what's cool is it's super uh, replayable because there's a couple of different motherships. There's a couple of different player ships and they all have different abilities and characteristics. And what's neat is it's sort of got this race element to it because you only have, I think it's six or seven warps. So it's basically rounds that you can go through in order to uh, kill off the mothership. And of course you can't just kill off the mothership. You've got to go through an entire fleet of other ships. So they send out all their ships you, to take them down first. And hopefully you're building up your you know uh, defenses and also your weapons to the point where you can take down that mothership. Um, what really caught me off guard though about this game, and I was, it was really neat was a narrative element to it where they gave you this narrative book. Um, it was actually uh, written by Banana Chan, who she is renowned, well-renowned in the RPG space. Um, she does a lot of writing. Um, I love her stuff. And in this game, you give this like little background story and um, almost like a, you know, hey, here's what this is all about. This is why your ship is out there and why you're pew-pewing um, for, uh, with the spag builder. But the game, it flows so smoothly. It's terrific. And... You know, I know solo games aren't for everyone, but this one is fantastic, folks. I highly recommend mm-hmm. it. That's why it's our number five, Warp's Edge. I figured this would be on your list. I've never played it because yeah. I'm not really a solo gamer, but I, I know you are, and I know that this is well-regarded. Yeah. And it's it really, like, it looks cool. Like, yeah. It's a, it's a it, cool theme. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do love this the sci-fi theme, and I just love the fact that it's everything just made sense in this game, right? It's like... Oh, I'm. I need to have better weapons so I can fight off all these ships. Yes, right. I. You know, in order to get that, I need to take out certain chips out of my bag. How do I do that? I I trash them or whatever so I can get the better weapons. You know, because I want to get all these ships out of the way so I can get that mothership. And then that mothership has certain requirements. Oh, I needed this weapon. I need to discard this one. Everything just really flows smoothly in this game. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chris, I know you're not uh, um, a solo gamer, but this one I really think. Um, this is the one for you, man. This is yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go on to Richard. He's got number four. Richard, take it away. Okay. All right. What do we got next? Oh, Chris Orléans. Of course, somebody had to put this on the list. It wasn't going to be me for reasons that will become clear in the post show. I'm not heck with it. I'll just say it right now. Orléans is great, but um, Altiplano, uh, its sequel from the same publisher designer, the same idea of bag building, so improves on Orléans, destroys Orléans as far as I'm concerned. But I'll talk about that in the post show. We'll just, I- I'm just going to say our number six is Orléans slash Altiplano again, because there really are sibling products and it's just Altiplano is so much better. And if you want to know why, folks, you know what to do. Go check out the extended edition of the show where I'm going to give you a full top 10 bag builders. And, uh, well, oh, Warp's Edge. 
That is an excellent choice. Oh man, I wish Warp's Edge, I wish Scott Alms had just done a tiny bit more work and come up with a way to turn that into a multiplayer game where we share control of the ship and I'm trying to, you know, I'm, you know, my bag's full of some things and yours is full of others and we're working together to take out the Armada. But still, an absolutely brilliant game and a must-have for solo players. Probably one of, you know, I mean, heck, would it go into my top 10 solo games? It might. It's excellent. Uh, you know, true solo games, I should say. Warp's Edge, very sharp. Okay, now let's go on to number four on my list, and or our list, and this is, this is a sad one. This is probably the most criminally overlooked game on the list today. Very few people have heard about it. Uh, I'm sure neither of you guys have. It is Nomopolis, uh, which is a bag builder from a uh, South American publishing house, and it's so good. Although, I, if you look at what's on screen right now, you might say, wait a minute. Aren't those cups? Yes. For some reason, this game, actually, it is a bag builder, but instead of putting bags, uh, they actually put little plastic coffee cups. So it's a cup builder. But strictly speaking, functionally, it's the same thing. You could put your little meeples, uh, colored meeples that represent different gnomes, um, you know, in your little underground gnome village. You could have put them in bags instead of cups if you want. It's just the game came with four colorful coffee cups for some reason. But anyway... It's a wonderful game. I have, I know they've got a uh, an expansion in mind, and I've been hoping, hoping, hoping that sooner or later people would discover this game, and there'd be more demand for it, or maybe they could uh, get a um, you know a, a bigger publisher, uh, publisher AEG. You do bag builders. Why don't you contact them? It's so good. But what is it? Okay, like I said, we are competing to be the best underground gnomish shitty. Uh, we've got all these different little colored gnomes. Um, but a big part of this game is training your gnomes. You start with a bag or cup of junior gnomes, and there are a bunch of cards that we. Can can draft that say, hey, if I've got this particular gnome, then I could train a junior gnome to be an engineer or a wizard or whatever. But I've got to get the combination of cards for the different types of training. I've got to draw the right types of gnomes out of my bag or cup to be able to run them. And that's really, really cool that um, it's not just a matter of just buying more stuff and throwing in your bag, but upgrading what is already in your bag uh, that makes this stand out. But what's even cooler, uh, I absolutely love the most is, um, you know, hey, we're all friends. I mean, we're competing to be the best gnome, um, you know, leader, but we'll help each other out because, um, let's see, maybe if a little bit later in the video you can see it. Uh, over there on the left, um, there's that blue armadillo. The gnomes, right? Uh, one of the things you can do in this game when you've got gnomes and, oh, I don't have the right card to be able to, you know, train this gnome. I can put a gnome on a little meeple armadillo and it rides over over to your village and gets training with your cards. And they didn't have to do this, but it's so wonderful and fun and charming. It is a blast as you level up. And, um, and you know, there always are new generations of gnomes coming into the village. So you're constantly getting more low-level gnomes that, okay, well, now I've got to train these ones up, but I've already trained enough of this. Now I've got to switch and train in a different direction. It's very, very sharp. Um, there's public objectives everybody's chasing after to get the right combination. It's neat. Uh, again, criminal overlooked. Such a brilliant design. So much fun. Number four on our list, Nomopolis. Yeah, that Nomopolis. I've never heard of this game, Richard. So thank you for putting on this list. I, I would totally want to play this game. It looks like my style of game. This is the type of game I would bring home that Michelle and I would probably enjoy. Um, and it's just looking at it, just super cute. And uh, the coffee cups. It's yeah, it's a coffee builder. I guess we can let that one slide as a well. Bag that's builder. the thing, right? <laughs> like, even though I do like when even when Richard agrees with me, he has to disagree with me. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, but also, are we allowing cup builders? Because we didn't do pool builders. That's, are we allowing cup builders? I don't know. It feels right. like there was a breach here. <laughs> it feels like there was a breach, but I might let it slide because I haven't heard of Nomopolis either, or yeah. or whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah, that's um, it. Uh, uh, and uh, it looks really cool. And I like, again, I, I like learning learning about exciting games. And that's yeah. why you all tune in here as well. So for the sake of the audience, you know what? I'll let it slide. 
I'll, let, you, I'll allow it. I'll nice. Allow it. Thank you, Chris. And why don't we move right along and get back on track with bag builders? Uh, Chris, you've got our number three. <laughs> well, this one definitely is a bag builder. And for those folks at home who, do, who don't know how we make these lists, we all kind of compile our own lists. And then we will take our top numbers and put them in. And if there's any, uh, any sort of conflict, uh, then one of ours will be bumped down. It's usually skewed towards who puts it on their list higher. So by me putting this as my number one, I ensured that I got to be the one to talk about it <laughs> because I knew that I was going to be on everybody else's list, yeah. especially, and I did this as a shout out to Ray, um, for whom it might have been her number one as well. This yep. is Quacks of Quedlingburg, of course, uh, which yes. is our number three. And I wanted to lay claim to it as having <laughs> put it on my list. And so I put I put it 100% as my number one. It's so um, yeah. <laughs> it just for, for that fact alone. But it needs to be on the list because it is fantastic. It's such a simple push your luck game. You're building a little bag. You're pulling. Everybody pulls out something out of their bag. And then you choose to keep on pulling or you choose to stop. And you don't want to bust. If you get too many white chips drawn out of the bags, you will bust. And then you will not get your points and your money. You can get either or. And I think that's also a really uh, fun thing because it's not so bad if you bust you still have the ability to build your engine or you still have the ability to get those points and hope that your engine goes off in the next one right it's just it's just a heck of a lot of fun you need the the tokens uh, this is the only time i will say you need deluxificated bits i don't even i haven't even played with the basic ones and i will I never agree. i mean i probably will i need to get this <laughs> i need to get a copy of this I agree. um I'm excited to play this this summer. Some people who are here in Nova Scotia have a copy, and I am really looking forward to playing this again. I need to get my own copy of everything. It's just so friggin' good. It's so simple. Yeah. You pull a chip out. Did you bust or didn't you? But the abilities of the chips make it fun. The the Everything about it just makes it fun of just a very simple push-your-luck game. It has no right to be as fun as it is, <laughs> but it but it is. Yeah. Uh, and I like, and I like, and I think what's hugely important, and I think this is really cool, is, is that you choose a random power for your chips beforehand, <laughs> right? You have the ability to say, like, oh, now the blue chips do this, or the blue chips do this. Uh, in the game that I played, the blue chips did the thing that I can only assume they're supremely overpowered because I didn't get any, and I, I lost abysmally. But <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's a it's a really great game, and if you haven't played it and you get the opportunity to try it, play it. If you like push your luck games, this is this is absolutely the one. Yeah, I feel like this is the quintessential uh, bag builder right here. You say bag building, this mm -hmm. is the one you point to, um, and. <clears throat> It's, it had to be on this list, and you beat me by one slot. This was my number two on my personal list, so <laughs> <laughs> I knew one of us was going to talk about it. But yeah, and, and I think yeah, I feel like I did Ray, that. I, yeah, I, I feel that like Ray purpose. was definitely going to put on her number one, but it definitely yeah. had to be on this list. It's uh, a wonderful game, and um, as you said, it's it shouldn't be as, as fun. I mean, it's just you right, reach in bag, pull a chip, and that's it. But yeah, there it is that tactile sensation we've talked about this a lot already actually folks we actually talked about this in the pre-show we do a pre-show and a post-show live on twitch and you can click on the links below for the extended edition of the r, &R show uh but yeah just the tactile sensation and when you upgrade those when you literally upgrade your bits to the those yeah. geek bits or whatever it does make the game that much better it's just so fun to pull those and you know you see that building your you know stirring your little pot and hopefully you push your luck just enough to get the most points i yeah i love this game and i'm so glad you put it on here chris well deserved number three and actually probably should it could have easily been number one two or three it could have been number one yeah yeah, yeah. It's, i'm glad honestly three feels too low for it but i am yeah. Uh, I think I know what your next one is, and I think this one was on my list. And and uh, yeah, you, so we had it. We had a little give and take here. We did. Uh, we did. Why don't you tell us about our number two? Yeah, our number two actually borrows uh, the bag building bit from uh, Quacks and Quillenberg. It is our number two uh, from Druid City Games: Wonderland's War. Uh, and this is oh my gosh, I. I am a new convert to how great this game is, Chris. I recently just played it. Uh, seriously, yeah. let's see. We're filming this in June. I played this in May. So last month, I played it for the first oh, time. Oh, yeah. And I was... I, I'd known the hype going in. And, you know, I, as a fellow content creator, you know, you're you're not totally obli oblivious to all the hype. But I was yeah. like, okay, we'll see how it plays. 
I was one turn into this game was like, this is an all timer for me. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, it is set in the wonderful world of, um, you know, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, this is Amy and Maggie's run through for the channel. And as you can see here, it's it's just a beautiful um, board and artwork by Manny Tremblay. And the game itself, you're there at the table and you're trying to pick a uh, an action. To, you know, you choose an action and you have your player board. You have a different abilities. It's asymmetric. And you're trying to level up your player board to do stuff because of ultimately what you want to do is go to the different areas on the board in this area control battle. And that blew me away. I was like, wait. It's bag building and area control. This is awesome. And so you're sending out your troops, right, to all the different spots. And all your, you know, different uh, abilities factor into this game. So all of a sudden, you take Quacks and Quillenberg. Hey, I'm just pulling stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you're using area or the bag building for combat. I mean, it's brilliant. I, I absolutely love it. Um, gosh, what else can I say about this game? It's so much more beautiful in person. Like, it looks gorgeous here, but when I saw it in person... Now, granted, we were playing the Deluxe Edition with all the cool bits and whatnot, but boy, oh boy, it was one of the most beautiful-looking uh, table presents that I've ever seen uh, in a board game. It is gorgeous. It's the game... The gameplay, it's much smoother than I expected. I just figured with all this stuff going on, it was going clunky. I'd have to remember a ton of rules. No, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a ton of strategy because, oh, I know Chris is going to this spot. I want to go there too. But wait a second. He has this ability back on this spot, but I can use this. But, you know, it's one of those things. It just, it uh, you know, layers and upon layers of strategy and complexity. I absolutely love it. I was so pleasantly surprised and it shot yeah. up to the top of my list. And then after I'd played it again, um, again, full disclosure, I just played it last month for the first time. It was on set. We did a video coming real soon to the Good Time Society channel, folks. And then I played it afterwards off, off camera, off set. It confirmed everything I love about this game. It is an all timer for me. Easily one of my top 25 games of all time now. And it's my favorite bag builder. It's number two on our list. Wonderland's war. Did you play with the new factions? I did. Are, yeah, we played did? with the expansion. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. With the smoke. Uh, I, and... I, well, I got crushed. That's all I'm gonna say about the game. Okay. Um, I actually, maybe <laughs> no, I didn't get crushed, folks. Go tune into the video that's coming out real soon on Good Time Society. But just to, yeah. uh, try the different abilities and the shards, the way the shards worked are really cool. Mm. Like those are negative points, right? Yeah. To, yeah. Oh, Chris, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I was actually blown away by this game. It was so good. Uh, this was my number two. Okay. This was my number two, and yeah. uh, and and very well uh, could have been about. It's battle quacks. You, yeah, you want to take all the totally joy of quacks, quacks. and yep. then you add in a battle. That's what a lot of people have, have referred to it as. It yeah. it's there's it's really good. Again, mm -hmm. I played it for the first time in February. I've only played it once, okay. and I know that they have another campaign coming out. Yep. Um, because they they have a like a little expansion, and I know some people who have been like play testing with the prototypes and mm -hmm. and the new factions and they're still like trying to tweak them etc this is one that like i i and i don't feel like they this is just this is just conjecture but they they may not do the retail it might just be the one deluxe edition because in like print runs they they have it's easier just to produce one thing one, yeah. instead of two things it's just yeah. it just costs less money and in terms of like demand and whatever uh this is one that i i'm I will very seriously consider backing, even though I know it will be expensive yeah. because it was, it was that good. Like it, it is really, really fun. It, again, I also thought it was going to be a bit convoluted too with the right. two different phases, mm -hmm. but once you get it under your belt a little bit, you, you know, I played at the level up gaming retreat uh -huh. and uh, we, we had another table who was playing it next to us. And it was great. Cause then when, <laughs> when we had a rules question, we ran over and we're like, is this it? <laughs> okay, great. Cause we nice. were like learning it from the rule book essentially. Yeah. Um, but it, it was just, it, it was really, really good. Super fun. I love asymmetric abilities. It's like yeah. bringing that to quacks and like adding a battle element. Re just a really great time yeah. that I'm going to have to talk myself out of <laughs> spending all that money. Yeah. But I don't know if, if, if I want to. I don't yeah. know if I do. Like, I, yeah. I think I want I want to own a copy of this because it was really good. It's yeah. a big table table hog, though. Large table presence. True. That, that's, um, yeah, that's uh, I'm glad you pointed it out yeah. because people should know. Like, it is absolutely beautiful. But, yes, it's huge. It is yeah. a huge game. The board is big. And especially, I think because of the deluxe edition, it's all player mats. Like it's all the neoprene yeah, mats. So it's yeah. even bigger 
than the normal game. So you oh, definitely yeah. need the table space for this, but I feel like it's yeah. worth it. It is, it is so yeah. good. I'm, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop raving about Warnland's War because we need to hear what Richard's got let's, for our number let's one. see what Richard's got. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go, Richard. Okay, coming down to the wire. Chris, Quax, of course, somebody was going to put it on the list. I mean, honestly, Quax and Quentlenburg is why we're doing this list. You probably already mentioned in the intro that when we did um, Deck Builders recently, <laughs> Ray really, really, really wanted Quax on the list. And I said, no! It's a deck builder. It's not a bag builder. And so, uh, Ray, this one is for you. Although this one's not for me because in all honesty, I'm going to buck the trend and say, yeah, Quacks was not for me and Jen. I did not keep the game. I did not like the way the push your luck was balanced. I, I felt it kind of incentivized the wrong stuff and the payouts were all kinds of wacky. And again, I'm the only person in the world who thinks this. Everybody else loves it. If you want to know more, you can go watch my final thoughts. But yeah. I appreciate Quax, but no, no, not for me. Um, so, Chris, once again, we are at loggerheads. And Ruel, Wonderland's War. Man, this game looks so good. Amy and Maggie did a run-through for the channel. And they almost convinced me I should check it out. Again, um, you know, bag building for, uh, you know, combat resolution. It, uh, you know, it, these aren't the only ones. I mean, Chris had one. Now Ruel's had one. I've got one. But we'll talk about that in the uh, post show. And, uh, yeah, always a good thing. And, man, such a gorgeous, gorgeous game. And it seems like the bag building is very, very impactful there. But um, there can be only one number one. And once again, I'm going to go for a lesser known title uh, you guys will have to let me know if you've heard of this probably not but you should have and everybody else should have too because it's absolutely brilliant it is John Nang Life of Gentry and this is actually uh, set in the Ming Dynasty it's from a Taiwanese designer and it is freaking brilliant maybe I think the heaviest game we have talked about on the show today this is another thing where um, we have a bag of chits this time uh, what have I had now? I've had meeples and I've had cubes and now I'm pulling chits out of a bag. Um, and the chits, every round, we draw four of them and first come, first serve, we put them on our little board. This is a bag building slash worker placement game. And like the first one I talked about, uh, meeples and monsters, what I pull out of the bag tells me what workers I have. Or actually more to the point, it tells me where can I send my workers. I might have the one that, I mean, I might pull, oh, out of the bag, I pulled two chits that say I can go to the market this round and one that says I can go to the the uh, you know walk the countryside and stuff like that and um, there but they are first come first served you lay them out you put them on a board and here's the tricky thing when your turn comes around you're gonna pick one of the four chits you pulled out of the bag to send your workers out and do the various things you want to do in this worker placement game we are artists in the Ming Dynasty trying to make beautiful works of art uh, you know stage plays poems actual you know paintings uh, to fit the needs of the people and the pop populist's favor of different types of art is constantly shifting throughout. And so we go to different places um, in Jiannang for um, inspiration. And the chits say where we can go. But here's the tricky thing. Like I said, you lay them out from left to right. Um, you pick one of those four chits, any of those chits, and that says where you can go, what you can do, what art you can create. But after you've done that, the chit that is furthest to the right, the first one you drew, that one gets discarded. Um, not just into a discard pile, but out of the bag. It gets destroyed. It gets trashed. It's gone. Um, and so, every round, you're getting new chits. At the end of the round, you're getting new chits. They're taken from the top of the bag, you know, trying to get stronger. I really want to go to the market more. I need to get more market chits so I have a greater shot of going to the market. Um, but you're, every round, you're also getting rid of chits, too. So the bag is in constant flux. But here's the other brilliant thing about this game. Each one of these chits, um, when you use one, it says, hey, where can I go? What worker placement action can I do? But there there is a second resource on the chit, uh, the bottom one. The chit that gets discarded and is removed from the game, you activate the bottom power of that chit. And what's really special, as a two-player game, the bottom one says where you can send your other worker. Um, you know, because uh, in a, a two-player game, it replicates a four-player game by each player having two worker colors. So I choose the top action of the, ch of the chit I choose lets me go where I want to do. The bottom action of the chit that is discarded and removed from the board um, decides where my 
my other worker is going to go and basically blocks the board and, you know, creates congestion and whatnot, like a good worker placement game. And this is freaking brilliant. It is such a smart, smart, smart idea. Um, and this is just one of many ideas. Uh, I should also say that second worker is an area control element. So the chit you choose, that's your worker placement. The chit that gets discarded, um, that's your area control for these barges that are going through, which is like this whole extra scoring element. And it's so smart. Um, because the thing is, oh, the chit is all the way to the right. I don't want to do that action right now, but I don't want that chit to go away. So do I do that action anyway? So it'll stay in my bag. And then the next one, the second chit I drew is going to be my area control chit. And then it's going to go away. There is so much clever planning, all driven by bag building in this game. And it's absolutely freaking brilliant. And like I said, it deserves a lot more attention, uh, like my previous one on the list. And yeah, it's 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 really wonderfully thematic, a really sharp Euro design with... I, I, I've just mentioned one of many really cool uh, mechanisms in the game. It's probably one of the most innovative games that have come out in recent years. And uh, it's our number one bag builder on this combined list, John Nang, Life of Gentry. Back to you guys. Yeah, Richard, I have not heard of this game, but boy, it looks really interesting. Once you got the whole, like, hey, this is bag building, but then you got the area control thing, worker placement, uh, the the different ways that the chits work, I'm definitely interested in this one. It, it looks it looks really cool. I remember this one. This one oh. funded, I, I was looking it up while Richard was talking, this yeah. one funded back in 2022, at okay. the beginning of 2022. It finished up in between February 22nd and March 1st. Uh, I was checking my list of my crowdfunding countdown list where I have all the campaigns and it was and and I remember I was I was like did was this my pick of the week it was in the same week as an unfair expansion uh, and it was uh, also the same week as Rolling Heights and Astro Knights uh, uh, and ooh. like so a couple of like really and Reckland Run speaking of Warp's Edge Oh wow yeah uh, yeah yeah a couple a really a bunch of really like heavy hitters in that week. But I remember this. I remember the party boats that go down mm. the deluxe edition. You have like these little party boats. So you put your, you put your meeples on and activate stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm really thrilled that it, it resonated with Richard so much that it, it made number one. Nice. Um, so look at that, Richard. We're not at odds anymore. <laughs> We've come together. Number one. I'm thrilled. I'm yes. thrilled. Yes. And that's a perfect way to end the show right now. Thanks again for watching, folks. Be sure to click on the links below to find the extended edition. And you won't want to miss that extended edition, folks. I've got a full top 10, don't forget. Uh, if you like Bag Builders and you made it this far, you would be remiss not to hear about a bunch of other games I promise you've never heard of before. Plus, there's all the fun chicanery that happens in the pre-show. So click, 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 folks. It's on screen right now. Click, click, clickety, click, click.